Lost Ark is a multi-character game. You can share materials and resources among other characters in your roster. People have been asking me about ults during my stream, so I made a quick video to give you some information about them. First, developers will give away a lot of free boosts to help you catch up to other players. They have always been done that for every 3-6 to six months, or when every new class character comes out. Gold can also be utilized to skip stories, which is called Knowledge Transfer System in your Stronghold. You're perfectly fine with a single character though. You'll be able to enjoy all the content the game provides. Having an alt character is just a better and time efficiency. Here are some of the critical reasons why you should make an alt character though, other than material sharing among characters in your roster. First, your ability to do more than three different Una quests to work up more reputation at a time. So when I started this game, I started with 12 characters and boosted them all to clear as many reputations at once to catch up to the general Korean users. So 36 different reputations were being worked at the same time to get reputation collectibles at a super fast pace. For example, my characters were strategically placed in different towns just to do Una quests quickly to clear up reputation collectibles for faster unlocks. You know some reputations take up to 15 days or 40 days on longer ones. I wanted to work on the reputation as fast as possible so I can finish as much as I can as days pass by. Second, ability to do additional Una quest, mostly on silver requirement. When you are done with the most of the reputations on the first point, all my characters repeated a select set of Una quests, mostly silver as most Korean users do. The Lopen Island runs are done by saving your Bifrost warps to each cities to gain about 90k silver per day per character. So having more high level characters benefit from amount of Una quests you can do per account. Third, more gold generation. Now let's talk about gold generation. When this game starts to develop further and people start doing abyss raids and legion raids, your character can make gold per week. For example, in the Korean server, item level 1415 character can run Argos Abyss raid for 1600 gold and Valton legion raid for 2500 gold, total summing up to 4100 gold. And you can only run these dungeons once per character. So more character you have, you can generate more gold per week for your account. There used to be a time where there were no limits in gold gain per character. So some people make 24 characters, boost them to 1302, then hone them to 1370 to receive gold from Orha and Argos. They used to give 1300 and 3300 gold per week. So what people did was pay carries where they call them bus drivers to clear the dungeons for them and make about 3000 gold per character. Some people have been making a fortune out of this, including me, but I was differing amongst them due to myself investing the gold back into the characters themselves to be able to run the dungeons myself in pug rooms. Now the dungeon golds have been nerfed and you're limited to 6 characters that can generate gold per week. So additionally in my case, I have 6 characters that are over item level 1500, fully spec, which generates about 20k to 30k gold per week per character. You do have to spend more time in the game though running the actual raid, but it is more efficient time spent per gold gain. Fourth, Traveling merchants and various additional activities like islands. On a side note, you can also strategically place your characters around the world for faster traveling merchant access. I bifrosted them and organized all my characters to access the traveling merchants if I want to. Also, finding event islands like Dookie or Peach Island is a pain. So I place my characters near there so I can access whenever it happens while I'm playing my different character. Until I get the collectible for the island, the characters stayed there for the longest time. Now that we know about having ults is nice, I will answer some of the most asked questions during my stream. What are some of the benefits of making same class ults versus different class ults? Let's talk about the same class ults first. You can't share gears and accessories. You can mail your accessories though, but it will cost you precious payons. However, besides the roster benefits like extra skill points, runes, cards, etc., you can share gems. Gems are the most crucial part in the tier 3 endgame. You don't have to worry about this now for the next few months in NA though, but I'll give you guys a rundown. A level 10 tier 3 gem is currently about 600k to 700k gold in the Korean auction house. How gem works is that you can set either damage gems or cooldown gems on a specific skill. In order for you to have it to a skill that you want, you need to spend silver and hope to get the skill that you want in a random roll. Having a proper gem will result your skill to be at max 40% more stronger damage than without one. By the way, don't be scared at the big 600k, 700k gold numbers though. Those are for big, big, big enthusiasts. Even I don't have it. You can clear most of the dungeons with level 5 to 7 gems, which it gives about 15 to 20% increase in damage per skill, or 10 to 14% in cooldowns, which costs about 2k to 17k gold per gem in the Korean auction house. If you have multiple of the same class, you don't need to buy additional gems. You can just transfer it without any additional costs. I guess some obvious disadvantage is the game could get a little stale. 
As for different class alts, you can get more variety of gameplay, and by being able to obtain different class gears and loots, you'll be way more knowledgeable at the game in a wider spectrum. This is a path I took because I enjoyed the game, and I believe all classes are very unique in their own way, and is worth it to be explored. Second question, when do you start leveling alts? This is a very tough question every time I got it asked during my livestream. There is no real answer to this. I leveled up my alts when I was finished with my dailies with my character. I valued Una Quest so much that many of my characters just did Una Quests at a freshly boosted item level 302. They never gained any level from honing until I decided to raise more characters for additional raid experiences. In the end, it is definitely your preference, but it is advisable to plan wisely to distribute between tiers, which is under 600 or item level 1100, because you won't be able to gather the same materials among all your characters if it's not balanced. I advise you to experience as much as you can without rushing too much or spending too much resources. Third question, out of that much time, can I just have one character? Yes again? As I explained before, you can definitely enjoy the game fully with one character. I have many high level raid members playing with only one character. I think the best time management is if you're finding yourself not doing anything in the game. I will suggest you to invest some time on an alt character. It will do more good than bad. And last question, how many ults do you recommend? I personally recommend up to 3, maximum 6, because even if NA server allows more than 6 characters to gain gold, they will eventually patch it to the limit 6 characters for gold gain, like the Korean server. The efficiency severely drops when you go over 6 alts, so it is actually not worth the time. If you're planning to just gain silvers or bifrost teleports for the collectible gains, you can definitely do it the free boost developers will give you in the future. I will not spend additional resources even on those type of alts if it's more than 6. By the way, and I have 19 characters and the reason why I raise more than 6 even if it's not efficient is because I care about all the classes and I think all classes are very unique and very fun to play. So in an experimental case, I would spend and grow my characters to maybe learn about the class more to teach you guys in the future. On a personal side note, I would really want to suggest everyone to raise at least one support because if you raise a support, you would learn so much about the game and you'll be so much more knowledgeable at the game because the position of the supports are very crucial as the raids get harder. Hope this answers most of your thoughts on alts. In my opinion, as I always say on my livestream, do not worry and just enjoy the game and be diligent in your dailies. If you're ever stuck in the future, I'll be there to help you guys to plan your journey out. Thanks guys, bye.